God's about to change some things. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't know about the fullness of the Holy Ghost, I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what you have. You need the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And unfortunately, what many folk have already started to do is to revert back to the old trifling ways you had before the pandemic because you didn't learn that God was trying to show us something. God was trying to show you something bigger than yourself. He was trying to show you something about what it really meant to be in relationship with him. Coming up on Greater Change Ministries. Now when I said this the last time, some folk didn't wave their hand, but I got some people that can say in your heart, I do feel like I'm on time out with God. And I want to give you prophetic notice. What was time out is about to be time in. You, 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 you. Oh, God, I'm feeling it already. You're already turning into another move. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. From Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church in Decatur, Georgia, and Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, one church in two states, Pastored by Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, along with Elder Jasmine M. Robinson, and Overseers Bishop Paul S. Morton and Dr. Deborah B. Morton, welcomes you to the Greater Change Outreach Ministry. Things get better than what's been. I know that day is soon to shortly come. I can already feel now prepare for a life changing experience. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Greater Change Telecast. I'm your host. Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, I thank God for you today. There is such a prevalent word of what God has been doing in our midst, and I want to share it with you. It was the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, and the Spirit of God illuminated to me Acts chapter 1, verse number 3. And from that passage, I entitled that message, A Lot Can Happen in 40 days let's go into the sanctuary hear the word of god i want you to buckle your seatbelt right now call somebody let them know pastor rob is preaching he's prophesying he's teaching he's preaching right now a lot can happen in 40 days keep it locked right here i'll be right back acts chapter one only one verse there verse number three and i will be Observing this from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Acts chapter 1 at verse number 3 in the NLT says, During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And, you know, I love this part. He talked to them about the kingdom of God. This morning, I want to tag this text. If you will pray with me for a couple of minutes here, I want to tag this text. A lot can happen in 40 days a lot can happen in 40 days ushers you may be seated in the house of the Lord thank you for your service I want to dive right into this passage by pulling from the pericope of this text 
My first point, which deals with the period that makes things happen. The period that makes things happen. Sisters and brothers, I have been arguing voraciously that 40 days is one of the predominant periods of time used in kingdom time telling. I call it the period of probation for the note taker. 40 days is the period of probation. And for me, in most instances, this is the period that makes things happen. Let me teach you before I preach you. From Resurrection Sunday to the day of ascension is 40 days. Everyone say 40 days. Resurrection Sunday to the day of ascension is 40 days. Let's look at this closely here. John chapter 20 at verse number 1. Again, New Living Translation said early. Everyone say early. <laughs> That's why the old preacher would say early. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. Uh, Mary is in the garden and she sees, watch it closely here, she sees the empty tomb and automatically presumes something. Verse number 2 of chapter 20 says, this is her presumption. They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Now John sums up Mary's inaccuracy in verse number 9. Allow me to use John chapter 20 to build the argument in Acts chapter 1. At verse number 9, the Bible says, for until, they, for until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Not, not only do you see the period that makes things happen, but look at the presence that makes things happen. Because what I just described to you is only day one. And some of y'all may not uh, understand it, but you may be just in day one of your current situation. And you're saying, I'm already out of time, but it's day one. Just pass it down your row and tell them the Lord is going to make some time for you. Come on, encourage your neighbor. Encourage them. Tell them you're not out of time. The Lord is going to work this out. Now, when I said this the last time, some folk didn't wave their hand, but I got some people that can say in your heart, I do feel like I'm on time out with God. And I want to give you prophetic notice. What was time out is about to be time in. You, you, you're, 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 oh, God, I'm feeling it already. You're already turning into another move of God. Why? Because you are in the presence that makes things happen. See, the period that makes things happen, that 40 days, has to give way to the presence of Jesus. The resurrected Jesus. Understand this. I am not talking about the pre-Calvary Jesus. I'm talking about, Elder Petit, the resurrected Jesus. And in case you don't know, there is a difference. Can I preach my way through here? Can I teach you before I preach you? There is a difference in a Jesus who had to walk the earth to get where he wanted to go. Now you got a Jesus who is omnipresent. Everywhere, all at the same time. See, the period, this 40-day period is giving way to the presence of Jesus. And you do understand I know it may sound mundane and elementary, but it is his presence. That may, where are my full gospel Baptist church fellowship folk at? It's his presence that makes all of the difference. 
Acts chapter 1, verse number 3, again, our, our anchor passage, the B clause, says, He appeared to the apostles from time to time. And when I read the original language of this text, it's a Greek word there, paristomai, which means he came into their midst. And not only did he come in their midst, but he stood side by side with them. Don't move. Stay right there. See, sometimes he has to come where you are. I'm talking to somebody in here that needs his presence and stand side by side with you. That's why I believe the old church said, and he walks with me. He talks with me. We don't sing songs like this anymore, but greater. We sing them in symposium. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus, y'all got it here, to walk with me. But why does he stand side by side? Why is this? Because now this, this has to be important to someone. Why didn't he stand? Why didn't they use a Greek word that meant he stood in front of them? Why didn't he follow them? Why side by side? He stood side by side because in a season like this, what this, Pastor Rob? You just watched him die on yonder's cross. Now let me level with you for a second here. We know the end of the story. We know he got up. But Put yourself in their shoes. If you just watched that man die. Come on, talk to me here. You watched him bleed voraciously. Profuse blood everywhere. Coming out of every orifice. And you watched. Him dying. Some of them didn't watch because they were too scared to come even see. You know he was buried. And then he comes and stands side. Come on, be a human. Be a human being, being human right now. Side by side with you. You only got two choices. Either run or worship. And, 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 and while you're laughing... I got some worshipers that can't hardly worship because they're busy running from his presence. But I need some worshipers that say, I'm not going to run out of his presence. Why not? Because the psalmist has given me a prophetic declaration. Psalm number 16, verse number 11. In his presence is the fullness of joy. I'm getting ahead of myself. The A clause said, you will show me the pathway of life. When you get in the presence of God, he starts showing you how to live again. He says, though I was dead, I am he who was dead and is yet alive. And I got some people right here in 2023 that can say, I serve a risen Savior. You heard First Lady say it on prayer line. He's in the world today. I'm bunny hopping across the lyrics to tell you he lives. He lives. How do I know he lives? Because sometimes he has to stand side by side with me paristomai he has to paristomai me I can't make it by myself so he comes and he stands with me so with every step I take he steps with me just a closer walk with Jesus I take another step he's walking with me he's giving me the confidence to know that he is alive Y'all be seated. I'm turning the corner here. But what I love about it, even when you don't unlock your doors, I'm still in John chapter 20. The B clause of 26 said, chapter 20, verse number 26, B clause says the doors were locked. But suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Just like he always does. Because the text said he did it as before. Suddenly, Jesus showed up. I wish I had some old Michael Jackson fans. And Jesus said, peace 
be with you. I want you to come on, help me in the room really quickly here. I went to Catholic school and in every mass, I look forward to this because it would help me wake up, get somebody and tell them, peace be with you. Come on, tell somebody else, peace be with you. That means the Lord has showed up and Parisamai is about to work for you. Peace is going to be with you. That don't mean everything is going to be all right. That don't mean that everything is going to be peachy king. That simply means in whatever you're going through, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you. Always standing side by side. When your mother and your father forsake you, he said, I will be with you. Peace. He said, peace be with you. Now, I've jumped ahead of the text because i got to get out of here. The first time Jesus showed up, Thomas was absent. What's the big deal with Thomas? Jesus needs everybody there. See, a resurrected Jesus wants to convince everybody who's following him that he is what he says he is. Pre-resurrected Jesus said, I came to my own and my own received me not. But the resurrected Jesus said, where's Thomas at? Oh, okay, Thomas ain't here. I'll be right back. Thomas over there may feel talking trash. I ain't believing. I ain't coming to church no more. I got to see some wounds. I got to see some nail prints. I got to put my hand in his side. And a resurrected Jesus, uh, Dr. Stevenson, who is omnipresent everywhere all at the same time. Wherever Jesus was when he was there, he heard what Tommy said. Tommy said, I ain't believing unless I see him for myself. And I want to serve notice on you still. Some of y'all that say, I believe in God, but I don't like his church. You cannot separate the Lord from his church. If you can tell me how to separate wet from water, I'll go with you. But since you can't pull it off, if you're going to believe in the Lord, you got to believe in his church. I hate church people. Well, you must hate yourself. Because all of us, we all like sheep, have gone astray. That's what he died for. He died until your attitude got better. And some folk may be slower than other ones. But what you got to do, what you got to do, what you got to do, how you got to learn how to handle people that don't do so well in the attitude department, you got to do what Jesus did and start telling them, peace be with you. And when you get done telling them, do what Jesus did, then disappear. Some of y'all sticking around trying to explain yourself. I know that's how you do it in New Orleans. You got to explain yourself. You got to set the record straight. You got to read their title clear. But you can't help somebody that don't want to be helped. So you better start learning how to tell them peace. Be with you and then disappear. That was for about 40 of y'all in the room right now. You're going to make me lay my religion down. No, pick your religion back up. Tell them, peace be with you. Exit stage left and disappear. Eight days later. I'm only on days one through eight. Somebody say eight days later. It's in your Bible, John chapter 20, verse number 26. In fact, this is where we are today. On this very day, eight days later, John chapter 20, verse number 26, disciples are together again. This time, Thomas is with them. They still locking the doors. But suddenly, everyone say suddenly, Jesus showed up and he said, peace be with you. Now, the first time he disappeared, said, I'll be back. Thomas is messing up the count. Judas has already went out and hung himself. We ain't losing Thomas like that. When he comes back, 
Peace be with you. One text in Matthew says they all worshiped him. But can you look at Thomas's face? Uh-uh. Don't try to play me like that now, Thomas. Close your mouth. Settle your palpitating heartbeat. Because I heard you when you say it. I won't believe. <laughs> Unless. Are y'all ready? Jesus said. My daddy would say this right before. I know it's abuse uh, 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 justice. I know we can't whoop children no more. All right. I know. I know. Right before my daddy would get you, he would say, come here to me. <laughs> Elder, you never wanted to hear my daddy say, come here to me. Come here was all right, but to me, Brother Gerald, that's what made it bad. That's where you would smell the coffee on his breath. That's where you would come eyeball to eyeball with his bifocals. Y'all ain't in the 80s with me. Come here. I'm running on now. You see the period? 40 days. You see his presence? You see his proof. But let me see you home when I show you his power. Because now he puts you in the power of what makes things happen. That's where it takes me back to the text. Uh, that the text says he's talking to them now. He, he's having greater relationship with them now. He has greater revelation with them. And the Lord said to me, and I'm out of here. He said, teach the people how to find yourself in scripture. Over the next 40 days, you're in a good period of time. If I could get you to understand how to do what Jesus did and how to respond the way that people responded to him. Tell your neighbor some things are about to happen in your life. I want to prophesy to somebody in greater right now that before we get to Pentecost, and before we put one stitch of white on before we lay hands on anybody some great things can happen in your life imagine this when you get to Pentecost you're going to get the power of Pentecost watch me here that says it's already done <laughs> uh, you missed it right there you ain't got to wait to Pentecost to get the Holy Ghost somebody in here is about to get full of the Holy Ghost over the next 30 some odd days will you pass it down your row and tell them it's already done I, okay I'm going to come down your way if your house if you believe in God for a house and you're in the process of closing on your house prophesy it's already done if you need a new car I know it's materialistic and you don't like to hear materialism in the modern day church but if you need it tell somebody it's already done if you need healing in your body tell somebody it's already done if you need your children yes Lord to make a turnaround I dare you to tell somebody it's already done if Bishop had the mic he would tell you don't wait until your battle is over shout now yes because it's already it's already done. now I know I've been bothering you a whole lot but you need to get a neighbor and tell your neighbor come on and convince them tell them it's already done in the name of Jesus when he started talking to them about the kingdom of God I just believe he was teaching them how to walk in it's already done the prayer that you prayed I don't know who this is for but somebody over here in section number six you prayed just last night the Lord said tell you it's already done a whole lot can happen in 40 days and I'm counting down but I need about 40 people to say 
it's already done it's already done and if you believe it and you receive it say yes say yes say yes. Who the power of God was in the greater St. Stephen Church. I know you can feel it translating right to where you are. A lot can happen in 40 days. Do you know that God can change the quality of your life for better over the next 40 days? You can count down, get your, cal get your calendar, get your phone out, get your smartphone, set an alarm for 40 days from now. Because I'm believing with you that a lot can happen in 40 days. Get ready for the resurrection power of Jesus to hit your life right now. I want to pray with you. I want to partner my faith with your faith as we move forward in God. Because something supernatural is getting ready to happen for you. Let's pray about it. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stretch my hand toward my sister, toward my brother, I pray that you will meet them and empower them right where they are over these next 40 days. Open now thou crystal fountain from whence healing waters flow. Flow in their direction. Cause something great and supernatural to happen for them. And we give you praise for it now that is being done while we ask for it. By the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Well, God bless you, beloved. Listen, there is a telephone number on the screen. You can dial that number right now. I have an operating team on standby to partner with you in prayer. Why? Because you're going to need some prayer partners to believe God with you for what will happen over the next 40 days. Well, listen, I'm out of talk. I'm never out of text, but I am out of time. So until this time next week, you keep it locked right here. And in the meantime, and in between time, do everything in your power to make it a greater change. You be blessed. Bye for now. Next week on Greater Change Ministry. I've come to speak hope into your life today that you have purpose to fulfill. You have fruit to produce. You have children and grandbabies to raise and to love. You have a future and a hope that's been prepared just for you. How many of you will declare today that you won't allow your mat, a.k.a. your that, stop you from believing that God can and he will? Oh, my. Things are changing.